Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another midweek tidbit for you. A lot of times I wish that I had something to tell me when a long-running process finishes, especially in Linux and especially on the server side. I'm going to show this on the desktop tonight, but when you're running something on the server and you've got a long process going, maybe you haven't updated your server in a long time, or maybe you're installing, you know, like on DigitalOcean and it's an older image and the updates are going to take just a little while, and you want something to t kind of tell you, like, hey, this thing's done. Um, could be a cron job that you run, a backup job, a snapshot, something like that, um, that's running that you just want to know it happened and not have to be sitting there watching the terminal to see that it's happening. So I found a few options here, and I wanted to kind of share those with you guys today. So that's why I've got the little notifications running here. So we're going to talk about notifications on the Linux desktop. Um, so we'll talk about Intify is how I'm going to say it. This is a Python application that you can install and run. It's pretty cool. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, one called uh, Notify-Send, which is just kind of built into the terminal emulator to start with. So I kind of want to do that one first. So I'm going to minimize this guy, and I'm going to minimize my um, notes here. And I'm just going to leave the terminal up. And then up here is where the notifications are going to happen. I've got night mode going on. Um, so... Uh, notify send is pretty easy. You just do notify dash send and then you put in maybe a title for the notification. So um, I finished and um, then you can put in basically you put a single quote around that and then you put another set of single quotes around whatever the message body you want to be is. So um, completed the backup job. Just now let's just say that that's it so when I hit this you'll see here is a notification here at the top of the screen and it has my title and it has that text so that's really kind of it, it it's just a notification that happens um, now if you have a system that builds up notifications those those will build up as well in your notification tray and you can go and check those things at a later time so you can kind of see the different notifications that have happened now Sending it straight from the terminal like that isn't super useful. But if you put that into a script, so if you said maybe uh, nano um, do something, I don't know, nano update.sh, and then in here we said, you know, shebang slash bin slash bash sudo apt update, and then send or notify send. Um, package update complete uh, and then time to start the upgrade process something like this now we've got a script that we could actually utilize for something and we could set this on a cron job if we want to. This isn't usually a long process, but it could be depending on how many packages you have installed, what your uh, network speeds are like, things like that. So we will save this and then that's control O and then exit with control X. So now we have update.sh down here in our list of uh, files. So we will go and we will change that. So you can just run that by putting dot and then a space dot slash update dot sh. It'll run. You don't have to make it executable. Um, but if you just try to do update dot sh, it's not going to do anything if you hit tab because it doesn't know what you're looking for. So it's going to show you a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so we'll do dot. So if you want to do that, um, you do chmod plus x update dot sh. Now it's executable. And we can just do update.sh. And it should run. Oh no, it doesn't like that. So we have to do it dot slash, sorry, dot slash. And it's going to ask for my password because it's actually running something that needs sudo. It's going to run this. I can look away. I can walk away. I can do whatever. But in a second, it's going to finish. And if this is running as a cron job, I wouldn't see it in the terminal. And you see it pops up right here. And it tells me, hey, this thing is done. 
So update may not be the best example, but there could be all kinds of things that you're doing on a schedule that maybe you're putting something in as a cron job and a script, you're using a bash script, and you want to get notified when it's finished. That's This is a really simple way to do that in the desktop environment. Um, you could go see those notifications after things are done. So notify send is kind of just built in. There's a few little modifiers that you can use with it. So if we do notify-send um, test1 and this is a message for this test and then we can say dash u so u is urgency level you have three options you have low you have normal and you have critical so we'll just kind of look at what these do low so we'll just send it there you go you get a little urgency icon that tells you it's not not a big deal we can do it again with normal and you see the icons a little bit different color I believe there and then you can do critical and in this case it's red so you know hey this is something you might want to pay a little bit more attention to so you can give it an urgency level on your notification now there's some other things that you could do here so I showed a, a, a command last week called speed test dash CLI and then dash dash simple was part of the actual um, command that says don't give me a bunch of uh, a bunch of extra stuff in the command line just give me the information from running speed test so um, you can do that and I'm gonna look at my little script here but you can actually pipe that into um, into your command so we don't have to do any installation there here we go so here it is right here so this is a fairly simple command that we can run. I'm going to copy that and we'll get this back out of the way here. I'm going to paste it. So if you run speed test dash CLI dash dash simple, basically there's your command. And then we're going to do while read. So basically take the output from this and pipe it into a read statement that's inside of a while loop. And we're going to create a variable. This, this variable right here, st underscore info, could be anything you want. I'll show you. We're going to change this to um, speed underscore info. We'll just call it whatever. It doesn't have to be underscore info. I'm just doing it because I don't know if speed is some other kind of command. Semicolon. And then so while reading it, then we're going to say do. And we're going to say notify send. So we're going to say pipe this original command into a while loop that's reading our output into this variable. And then we're going to say, do this thing. So send the information that you get out of that. And we're going to stick it into that variable we just created. So we need to change our variable to meet, match what we said. So speed. So dollar sign speed underscore info inside of quotes. And when all that's done, we're finished. So we're going to hit that. It's going to take a few seconds because the speed test takes a few seconds. So you can look away. And this thing's going to do its thing. And when you look back, it's going to give you notifications when it's finished. So you don't have to just sit here and watch the speed test run. Now you may want to, in this case it's a speed test, right? You want some information. But if you're just kind of wondering or you have this thing set to run every 20 minutes, like make sure my speeds are good, then you'll get a little bit of output from it. So when this thing finishes, there we go. So it's going to pop up and it's going to tell us the ping time. Great. So I'm going to clear that one. And then it's going to tell us what our download speed is. So 124 megabits per second. Great. And then our upload speed. So we've got 3.5 megabits per second, which is a little bit low for upload, but that's okay. Our download was really fast, and sometimes you have fluctuations. So if you hate that, you could run it again. I'm just trying to show you that you can pipe out the output of a command into your notify send so that you get that in your notification message. So that's notify send. That's just built in. As far as I can tell, every version of Ubuntu that I've installed, it was just there. I didn't have to go install it separately. So so that one's just in there. Now we're going to talk about Intify, which is a little bit different. It is, it is not installed by default. So first you need pip. Um, so if you don't have pip installed, which is a Python installer, um, and I'll make this a little bigger. Sorry for having that kind of small there, guys, but uh, most of you probably don't need it this large anyways. But you do sudo um, apt install python3-pip 
So this is the first part. You're going to install the pip installer, basically. So sudo apt install python3 pmp dash pip. This is for Ubuntu Debian based systems. If you have Fedora, if you have other ones, you'll have to figure out what it is to install python3 pip. It's probably a DNF install python3 pip or RPM install, but um, it'll vary depending on distros that you're using. But you want to install the python3 version of pip. So this is going to tell me it's already installed. Makes sense. After that, now you need to use pip to install Intify. So you're going to do sudo pip3, and you have to put pip3, install ntfy. So this is the command right here, and it's ntfy. So it's like notify without the O and the I, so Intify. We're going to hit enter. It's going to say it's already done. You don't need to do this again, so it's fine. Um, so I'm going to say ls and clear. So Intify is already installed for me, but you would install it. Now there's a few extra things that you might want to install with Intify, but first we'll just do Intify send test. And you'll see up here we just get the name of my machine and my name and test. So that sent us the little test message that we expected. So that's the simple part of Intify. So you could use Intify the same way you kind of did notify send basically, except it's a little a slightly different syntax. Now Intify comes with some extras, so I want to bring up my notes for this one. Because once we've installed that, there's a few other things that you might want to install here. So we're going to move down. So you can use Intify to send messages outside of the desktop. So this is great if you're going to be sitting at the desktop and see these messages, but if you what if you want to walk away and do something or have this run on a on a on a schedule and you're not near that, you're an IT professional, but you have your your phone. So you can do a few different things here. So um, PID, I'm not sure what it's doing there with PID, but emoji. So you want to install these because you can do some different stuff with Intify um, using the PIDs of the processes that are running. You can show emoji and in Intify basically if you do that. And then uh, XMPP will let you send this out to an XMPP chat server so that you can set up chat. Now, setting each one of these things up, there's more to it than just installing this part, but this is the command to install those. So if you want XMPP, you would do pip3 install intify open square bracket XMPP close square bracket. It's the same um, syntax up to here, and then other than that, you're just adding which thing you're which uh, plugin you're installing. So I'm going to show you Telegram here in just a minute and kind of how it works. But you also have options for info push. Um, or uh, sorry, Insta push. There's there's other push ones as well. So I'm going to put a link um, in the description that will take you to a page that gives you a lot of other ones for push notifications as well. So services that uh, offer push options, um, native push options. Um, so so moving on though, we have Slack. So if you're a Slack user, you can set up one for Slack and Rocket Chat. If you use Rocket Chat, you set one up for Rocket Chat. Um, so there's quite a few down here. So I'm going to show you this Intify. This is their, their test um, suggestion. And basically the first time you run the Telegram send option, it gives you a message about going and, and doing some extra things, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. So I'm just going to show this, um, and I'll record my phone screen so you can see that I get it on my phone. Give me just a second here. Okay, so I'm going to record this on my phone screen, and I'm going to paste that in here. And and on my screen, you can see that I got a notification in my Telegram. It's got a little one next to it now. Now that would give you the normal, there it is. So there's my notification on the screen of my phone. And it's my normal Telegram notification. So it says Telegram configured in TFY. If I go to Telegram, you can actually see that notification up there and here at the bottom. So. I've got some of the things here on the screen um, where I was doing some setup and some testing. So basically the setup is you have to go into Telegram. So I'm going to bring up my Telegram here on the, on the desktop. So in Telegram, you actually have to go out and you have to find Botfather. So in Botfather, so when it comes up, you'll see this. You know, what do you want to do? And it, it kind of did start for me. And it says, I can help you create different message telegram bots, which is cool. Um, so it, it wants you to do a few things. So you can see down here, I tried to do like, get me a token. 
and it told me yeah you can't really make a token yet you don't have any bots created so it says give me a bot name um, or, or it says so so first do new bot so I did the command new bot right here and then it says okay cool what do you want to call your bot so I just said Intify because that's what it's gonna be and continuing down it says alright cool now you gotta give your bot a name so I kept putting a hyphen it didn't like that so I finally figured out, oh, it doesn't want a hyphen in there. So you just don't put a hyphen. Just give it a name plus bot at the end. It was happy with that. And then it gave me basically um, the page for the bot. I'm not going to scroll down any further because then I've got the API key that it gives me. So when you run this command the first time, it's going to tell you, go find bot father in Telegram. So you just go find this bot father. You run through this process that I just talked about. And while you're doing that, over here it's waiting and it says, I need a token. It'll tell you as soon as it says go get bot father, it's going to say, I need a token for your bot. So this will give you a token down here in this message once you've given your bot a name. It'll give you a token. You copy that and you paste it over here and you hit enter. And when you do, it's going to say, okay, now go back in because you've got a new bot over here that it created. And it says, go put in this code. When you put in that code... Then it's going to say, congratulations, and over here you'll see it finished. So it's talking back and forth using that token from, from you to Telegram. Once you do that, you can use this command to send any message that you want to Telegram. And you can see I've sent a couple of test ones there. So I'll send this. And so there we go. So I'm going to send that and you see it shows up over here. I get the notification on the desktop and I also get it on my phone. So I have a lot of different ways to get notifications. I happen to use Telegram. If you use other things, they have quite a few actual plugins that I suggest you go check out and see what you think. Um, I really like Intify. It's a cool program. It's pretty awesome. It's easy to set up. I hope that you guys get something out of this. I hope it's worth your time. This is just one of those nice midweek tidbits for you that something really cool that you can do in Linux that I've been looking for and it was really easy to find and and really easy to set up. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, tell your friends and I'll talk to you next time.